Good morning, professors. We are team, we are team 2154736 from Dodgers and Boys School. I'm Chenek Hang with my teammate Sham Hei Chai. Uh, we are here to present our research paper titled On Variations of the Brachistochrome Curve. The Brachistochrome Curve is asked for a problem uh, asked for a path between two given points that minimizes the total t travel time of an object least from rest when only gravity is considered. We chose this topic because we found it approachable with our level of mathematical knowledge, and we had thought of many interesting variations of the problem that we could attempt. We will be using mainly the order of Lagrange equation, as the Brachistrom problem is a problem in variational calculus. We first consider a simpler setup to optimize the total time of travel, where the two given points are in two media separated by a horizontal boundary. If the object travels at a constant speed v1 and v2 in each medium, then to optimize the travel time, it will travel in a straight line in each medium. The remaining variable would be the position of which the object crosses the boundary, and we let this be x. We express the total time in terms of x and optimize it its value, obtaining cosine theta 1 over v1 equals cosine theta 2 over v2. Now, if we take the limit of each medium thickness to zero and the number of media to infinity, we can conclude that cosine theta over v, where theta and v is, are the angle of inclination and the uh, velocity of the object at each point on the path is constant. We assume that the starting point lies on y equals zero and that gravity points in the negative y direction. By the conservation of energy, v equals the square root of negative 2gy, negative two where g is the gravita gravitational field strength assumed to be constant. Hence, the square root of negative y over the cosine of the angle inclination is a constant k1. Expressing cosine theta in terms of dy over dx and applying an appropriate trigonometric substitution, we obtain a parameterized form of the Brachistochrome curve where the constants k and c can be solved to fit the starting and ending points. This also happens to be the parametric equation describing a cycloid. After the class classical Brachistochrome problem, we have come up with some variations. The main source of variation will be to change the velocity as a function of the position, where initially it was the square root of negative, negative 2gy. In our first variation, we, present, we wanted to involve x in the velocity, so we start from the origin and let v be the square root of negative 2g times x minus y, which is essentially acceleration force in positive x and negative y direction. In our, in our report, we presented two gravitational fields, but we, one could also consider gravity along with a uniform electric field passing it, uh, pointing in the positive, direct, positive x direction. Since velocity is ds over dt, we can express the total T time as an integral from the starting point A to the ending point B of ds over v. Simplifying, we obtain an integral from the x-coordinate of A to the x-coordinate of B of this integral dx. From here, we apply the order Lagrange equation, which states that if f, a function of x, y, and the derivative with respect to of y with respect to x is smooth, then the, the definite integral of f attains its extreme values if and only if the equation at the bottom is true. Applying the order of Grange equation and simplifying, we have x minus y on the right-hand side and the first and second deriv derivatives of y on the left. We then use a trigonometric substitution and hence obtain a differential equation in x. Considering the integrating factor, we solve for both x and y in terms of theta. In order to obtain a form similar to that of the, of the parameterized solution we have of the original bracket to curve we had obtained previously, we, uh, we let phi equals 2 pi minus theta, and we, obt we obtain the desired parameterization. Since the two forces sum to a constant net force of in the direction of y equals negative x, this is actually a side plot rotated 45 degrees anti-clockwise. Next, we explore the Brachistrom curve when friction is taken into account. To give an approximation for simpler calculations, we start at the origin, ignore ro the rolling friction, and assume that the net force is along the direction of motion. That is, we ignore the forces that change the object's direction. We defined in this section the angle of inclination and its sine, cosine, and tangent in terms of dx, dy, and ds. Using those expressions, we resolve the forces acting along, on the object along the, the direction of motion. Then we obtain the velocity, velocity in terms of position. v equals negative 2g times y plus mu x, where mu is the coefficient of friction. Again, using ds over v, we express the total time in terms of another integral. 
Applying the Euler Lagrange equation on the integrand, we initially have a rather complicated expression that can be simplified substantially into the derivative with respect to x of an expression equals zero. This implies, of course, that that particular expression is constant and will also be negative c. We then apply a trigonometric substitution. We take the derivative of the whole equation with respect to phi and solve for x in terms of phi here with a constant of integration kx. Substitute the result back into dy over dx equals negative cotangent phi over 2. We can also solve for y in terms of phi and with a constant of integration ky. Substituting back the expression from y plus 2x, we can solve for both kx and ky. Hence, we have, we have obtained our final answer. Note that when at mu is 0, zero the resulting curve is the classical Brachystrom curve as expected. After that, we present a more accurate version of the friction. We still keep the assumptions of not ruling friction and starting at the origin, but we take into account the forces that change the, the, the direction of motion. We apply a vector approach by expressing all the forces in, and the velocity in terms of unit vectors in the tangential direction t and the normal direction n. As you can see, the acceleration vector is the sum of the tangential acceleration changing the speed and the centripetal acceleration changing the direction. By expressing the sum of forces as mass times acceleration, we obtain a constraint on the motion of an object moving on a path. On the other hand, expressing tangent theta as dy over dx gives us another constraint of an object's motion. Since both v and theta and their derivatives with respect to x are variables, we need to apply the Euler Lagrange equation in tandem with Lagrange multipliers. The integral looks like this, with the expression following lambda being the first constraint and the one following k the second constraint. Optimizing this integral yields three equations relating v, theta, and their derivatives with respect to x. We obtain the final result after a complicated solving process shown in the report, with a and b here being constants. This graph is an example that compares the shapes of the Brachystrom curves with and without friction, with the black, red, and blue curves being the Brachystrom curves with no approximated and accurate friction respectively, taking the coefficient of friction to be 0.34. Since the effect of gravity is much more significant than that of friction when mu is small, the shapes of the curves are more or less similar, and when mu tends to zero, those three curves will coincide. However, when mu gets larger, the frictional force will become more dominant and the shape of the curves with friction will deviate more from the classical Brachystrom curve. After attempting to solve the problem under Newtonian mechanics, we ponder what happens when special relativity, com relativity comes into play. We know that the usual equations in, on mechanics become slightly different. For example, the, mo the momentum is m0 multiplied by the Lorentz factor. factor. We ignore the differences between the rest mass and relativistic mass, and hence we can still assume the net force mg is a derivative of momentum with respect to time. Through modeling the free fall of an object under these equations, we can, uh, we, uh, we can obtain v in terms of y, y coordinates. Then using this velocity and ds over v, we obtain yet another integral, but instead of all of Grange equation, we can, we can apply the Bertrami identity. The Bertrami identity can be used in place of the all of Grange equation when the integrand f is, uh, is independent of x. Then the equation on the right would hold true. Letting the constant on the right hand side to be r over c, we can express x as an integral in terms of y. However, even if we use an appropriate substitution, we unavoidably obtain an elliptic integral. Not completely satisfied with the result on special relativity, we were also curious about what would happen when the to the Brachystrom curve when objects undergo hyperbolic motion. The motion of an object with constant proper acceleration and special relativity. We first proposed a variant of Newton's second law applicable to special relativity, with f equals m0 gamma cubed times the acceleration vector. And here is the proof of the proposition we made. In our report, we then solved for v, attempted to optimize the proper time, and unfortunately, we were only able to obtain a quadrature solution. We considered this section to be an unfinished attempt. Here's a list of our references, and this is the end of our presentation.